it's rather as an enterprise you probably need to consider IT or, or digital services where it where it's uh, possible to stay uh, competitive otherwise you will be run uh, well competitors will run away from you so hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the iot for all podcast presented by iot for all the number one publication and resource for the internet of things i'm your host ryan chacon on today's episode we have martin whitlock the cto of telenor iot they are a world leading iot connectivity provider who helps organizations of all sizes connect and operate their devices and we are focusing today's conversation around network sunsetting what does it mean um, when it happens how you can prepare your iot deployments uh, what you can expect from future sunsets and ensure that you're kind of in the know and prepared for those as well as challenges with 5g transformation so fantastic episode ahead you'll get a lot of value out of it but before we get into it if you out there are looking to enter the fast growing and profitable iot market but don't know where to start check out our sponsor leverage leverage's iot solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey iot products that you can white label and resell under your own brand to learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Martin, to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks for hosting me. Absolutely. Excited to have you. Um, let's kick us off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself uh, and the company for our audience. Sure. Um, my name is Martin Whitlock, uh, Chief Technology Officer at uh, Telenor IoT. Uh, so representing the Telenor Group which is uh, one of the major telco groups in the world um, when it comes to the IT um, business and, and uh, helping uh, customers then, of course, to connect to things. Uh, primarily, we have a focus on uh, solving international connectivity. So it goes way beyond our own footprint, typically. Fantastic. Yeah, it um, seems like from, from my research, you have a lot of very exciting things going on in the IoT space. So I'm very, very happy to have you on the show today. And uh, I'm excited to talk about some of these, these points that uh, around network sunsetting, challenges with 5G, things like that, that I know have kind of been um, been discussed prior to us jumping on this recording here. Um, but let me kick it off by asking you about network sunsetting in general. Um, this is a topic that is come up in many conversations over over the last number of months. Um, what does it mean when a network is sunsetting? Just kind of high level explain that for our audience. Sure. I think um, to start, um, it's important to understand that all technologies, they have the life cycles, right? And, and sunsetting of, of mobile networks, which is on the agenda for these days, I mean, looking back in history, we have already sunset things like the telegraphs and, and we have sunset the DSL to a large extent in many parts of the world. And so, so these things happen and for a good course, of course, uh, we want to have better, more modern, more capable networks available. Same goes with, um, with 2G and 3G now, which is um, reaching the end of its, its life cycle in many markets. Uh, it's getting dated, basically. It cannot uh, do what, all the things that we want to do. So does that mean that um, we just uncontrolled shut things off from the one day to the other? No. Uh, we try to, as an industry, and now I'm talking about this from an industry perspective, but try to have it in, made in a controlled way, give a heads up to the market uh, where possible. but. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to shut off some technologies and replace them with right. others. Right. Absolutely. And what? And when we're talking about that, um, this this likely will air after I think 3G sunset. But can you just for audience tell us tell them when kind of the the sunsets have been kind of scheduled to take place and how they kind of ap approach that? Uh, there's not an easy answer to say if you look at it from a global perspective, at least, uh, because it looks uh, fairly different, actually, depending on where in the world you are. Um, it's not even so that uh, they come in a certain order. I think uh, looking at many markets in Europe, 3G sunsets will be made uh, before or have already happen some some extent uh, before 2G, um, while uh, you see it differently in, for instance, Asia. Uh, where 2G sunsets typically have happened before 3G. Other markets in Africa, and, and so they, they haven't even started to prepare for, for sunsets because um, they are in a different, different pace there. So I think it looks very different from, from different markets. Uh, US uh, being one of the more forward-leaning when it comes to sunsetting, um, both 2G and 3G, and, and right. we expect the, the last 2G network to sunset pretty soon. So. Yep. Yeah, uh, it it's happened happens already now. Uh, it will continue to happen. Twenty twenty five timeframe is often talked about from European perspective. 
uh, when it comes to 2G, uh, but, but it looks very different. I think that's one of the key points to understand now going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And when it relates to the IoT space in general, what does this mean for IoT deployments that are out there? And, you know, if there's deployments that are out in the field that are using 2G or 3G, when this network sunset, what 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 happens or, or what, what should people be thinking about? Uh, unfortunately, that's also one of those it depends type of questions, because uh, some applications which may have been around for a very long time, uh, they might be uh, 2G only in the device. I mean, there's no possibility for the, the installed modem or hardware to handle any other technology than 2G, for instance. And then, of course, when the last network on the market has been sunset, you don't have un any coverage. And that's a big impact potentially for the, the application. If if you're uh, relying on a roaming SIM card and there's one network around, you may still have the uh, possibility to extend the lifetime on that network. Um, but um, yeah, looks a little bit different. But I think th then, of course, it, for some other applications, it might not mean that much because you have a multi-mode modem already from start and, and you, you're prepared for transition into other technologies. But once again, this is something that that depends on the on what's being out there. And uh, I think the key message here now is to investigate this. Uh, do the inventory, uh, look at the markets where you have your installed devices, try to understand the roadmaps and time plans and, and uh, see what impact that will mean to you. And, and worst case, if it's an application that has to continue to live, uh, you might uh, need to, to replace some part of the hardware. And that right. is, of course, a business driven decision. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and for those end customers that are utilizing um, these solutions, how do you kind of minimize the impact of a network sunset on them? And again, it could be one of those, like you said, it could be an it depends type answer, but just generally speaking, um, what are there any kind of advice or best practices that companies can follow to minimize that impact? Being out in, in good time, I think is the, the key part here. Uh, I think uh, some of the, yeah, some customers of ours, they have already started to prepare for this. They might have maintenance windows that, uh, if it's, for instance, um, yeah, vehicles, something like that, uh, when they're brought in for maintenance, you at the same time make sure to replace uh, some kind of hardware or, or the modem typically then um, to something that is more future proof. Then maybe the, the impact is much less than if you have to go out and do a site visit, um, which is, of course, always more costly. Some applications uh, are, are fixed uh, and, and you have to go out to the field and, and do a site visit. But I think. Yeah, this really being ahead of, of yourself almost, uh, prepare for a, a pretty long horizon, understand that this is going to happen eventually. Right. Uh, right. That's the best way. And what happens after a sunset? Like how, what, what, how, how, how can companies kind of be prepared for what happens once, once the sunset is over? Like what, what does that kind of look like? Obviously, there's uh, there's also opportunities here uh, with the sure. uh, deployment of new technologies that are more capable. I think uh, the, the one of the the key technologies to look at when it comes to 2D, 3D sunsets as replacement technologies are the uh, mobile IoT technologies that are being launched on top of 4G footprint now and part of the 5G era. Uh, typically, LTM is uh, maybe one of the technologies that that uh, really um, has a feature parity in plus, I would say, to both 2G and 3G, in including possibilities to deep sleep modes and long battery lifetimes and high bit rates and lower latencies and all this. I mean, there are a lot of good things coming out of this as well. We do deploy new technologies and, and uh, being able to take advantage of that and maybe improve your application is right. um, something I, I believe you should consider in this transition, right? Fantastic. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so I wanted to shift. So we talked about, you know, 2G, 3G sunsetting, network sunsetting in general, what it means. So now let's look a little bit kind of where we are now, where we're going when it comes to 5G, um, kind of that 5G transformation that's happening. What would you say if, if someone was to ask you, um, what are the biggest challenges with, with the 5G transformation just in general from, from your standpoint? Yeah. Now, remembering that I represent uh, a an, an <laughs> business unit that, that has a very global perspective, I think right, you, right. you can look at it from a from a market, one market perspective, and you can then relate to what's happening there and you can, you can keep up. But most of our customers have a much more global perspective. They deploy their solutions in, yeah, up, we have customers uh, running applications in 170 markets simultaneously. And I think with a key challenge 
then is this fragment uh, the roadmaps depending on where you are where we will be in a situation now for some time where some markets will have shut off their last 2g 3g network and and uh, go all in on 5g yeah. uh, while others haven't started to roll out 5g yet they might not even have sufficient 4g coverage to to do natural coverage so i think this is a challenge because if you want to take the full benefit of 5g and expect to do that on a global use case um there's going to be a timing issue yeah yeah so so basically that availability of 5g networks will very will very much be different from market to market which can cause issues especially when you're trying to move or roll out a deployment that is across different markets where that 5g could be kind of not as consistent exactly um so so let me ask about kind of the operator community and being really aligned on things that um kind of need to happen when it comes to the 5g kind of adoption and transformation what will what is a what should be thought about on that front like you know how long will it take for for that community to really get aligned on the things that are important um uh in order to make this make 5G adoption and make 5G rollout and 5G network kind of more more available and and you know so people can really realize the, the full power of it. Mm. Some parts of it I think is already taking place. Uh, as I mentioned the the LTMs and narrowband ITs, the first first out so to say of the 5G era uh, being um, dedicated for IT as well. I mean networks are being rolled out, uh, roaming is being set up, um, business models are are there and so on. So I think there's more of a natural uh, rollout of, of network capacity around the world that that will take place i think when looking at the some of the more advanced concepts of 5g where we talk about network slicing ability to have a really dedicated quality of service for uh, remote controlled drones or you know these more advanced 5g use cases i think here we still have some ground to cover as an industry uh, to set up exactly how that's going to work when you have once again global deployments or international deployments i think on a national level it's much more contained to the the operator you discuss to who can on its own then define the business models and and uh, the technology according to our own roadmap but i mean some some people want to be able to access this if it's a remote control drone or whatever it is on other markets as well and then we need both technology integrations to take place, and those right. are not quite defined how they will happen. Uh, business models, not there yet. So yeah, I, I would actually expect it to take a few years before you can expect it to be um, uh, yeah, available everywhere, so to say. Fantastic. And let me ask a question, it's kind of unrelated to both these topics, but as we're into um, the new year, uh, where do you kind of see the biggest opportunities when it comes to the IoT space, you know, where are you seeing kind of ad in adoption, focus, use cases, kind of grow industries, bringing kind of IoT technologies in? Is there an area that you're really looking at, or kind of focused on, or excited about going into 2023? In general, I think we're still uh, we're still in the beginning of rollouts of IT. It's uh, it's a heavy growth everywhere, I would say. So maybe maybe it's more into the fact that you're not talking about it's only pioneers doing. IT and, and fully digital services anymore, but it's rather more <laughs> becoming mainstream actually, where uh, I think it's it's rather as an enterprise, you probably need to consider IT or, or digital services where, it, where it's uh, possible to stay uh, competitive. Otherwise you will be run, uh, well, competitors will run away from you. So uh, that is of course a, a big opportunity uh, in itself. It means that I, I, I don't think that there's one vertical maybe that stands out. Automotive is always interesting for IT because they are always pushing the boundaries for what we can and should do uh, in terms of use cases. But apart from that, I mean, we, we see great development in, in more or less all industries. Maybe healthcare uh, is sure. uh, taking off a little bit driven by right. the pandemic and uh, things like that. Uh, but heavy regulation and other things that sometimes makes it difficult to uh, absolutely to realize the full extent of it. Fantastic. Um, so uh, one thing I want to ask you before I let you go here is um, for our audience out there who wants to learn more about what you're doing, um, kind of follow up with any questions, discuss maybe some of the topics that we talked about here, learn more about what the company has going on. What's the best way that they can do that? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, reaching out to our website, you can find us if you Google Telenor IT. Um, that's uh, that's a good start. Uh, apart from that, I, I mean, I'm happy to, to take uh, in contact with anybody who has more questions or follow up, or uh, if you're an existing uh, customer, I mean, we have a big network of, of uh, account managers and all that. But uh, on our website, we have a lot of uh, web webinars ourselves. We have uh, white papers, we have other, um, resources available for anyone who wants to learn more so uh, I think that would be a good start awesome well martin thank you so much for taking the time i truly appreciate it um great conversation great points that um you mentioned i think these topics are super relevant especially in 2023 so um thank you again for for taking the time to be on and um, look forward to getting this out to our audience perfect thank you very much all right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the I2Fraud podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.